Hello party, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the worst things. And I had someone asking in my Discord about free VPNs. They, they gave a name of one that we'll look at. And the general concept, how does it work? How do these products, which are sometimes also marketed as web unlockers or similar, how do these things work? Well, there are a few possibilities. One is the age-old way that anything free online exists, which is advertising, either directly by adware or in terms of an upsell, which is just a form of direct advertising. The problem is, that's a tricky business model, and a lot of VPNs will attract or will have to use uh, much sketchier methods. Now, unfortunately, if you Google or Bing something, by default, you end up on these affiliate marketing websites these days, which are simply showing you whatever options they were paid to show. Now, of course, the top one, and this is a genuinely perfectly fine product, uh, th these are just mostly trialware. Uh, th this company has quite a bad reputation, but all of these are companies that, I, I have never heard of this one, so I can't speak for them, have a reasonable degree of credibility. But as you go down the rabbit hole, you find things, uh, like we can go on the Chrome store. So here is one such product, and this is among the most, uh, let's just call this the best of the worst, HoloVPN. HoloVPN is a product that turn, uh, in the sense that the company that uh, actually sells the exit node is reputable. Now, inevitably, the problem with HoloVPN is people using free VPNs is going to attract people who are quite likely to attract abuse. And the way this product will work, and we can connect to it, is it uses other users' IPs. We, we can find this out if we enable it and we go to what is my IP. Oh, that's interesting. We can't go to what is my IP. Is this because MI Tim Proxy is blocking Hola? Okay, let's just try a different site just to make sure that uh, this isn't uh, this isn't some weird bug. Let's go to YouTube. Okay, so we can watch, we can watch YouTube through Hola. No, actually, we, okay. Now, now we're watching it through the, the VPN, and it is in fact working. So then the question is, have they made it difficult to find the IP addresses of exit nodes on purpose, or do they just block arbitrary websites? Cool, so one can just test a unused punked domain that I own, and we can find out uh, if the domain... Okay, okay. So they're not doing anything super sketch then, they just have a, a limited list of allowed websites. Now, if we sit here and watch, what we will discover uh, about how HoloVPN works, and you do agree to it in the privacy policy, is that HoloVPN will route any traffic that you go through, through your computer. And every bit of traffic that you put through goes through someone else's computer. It's a bit like a pyramid scheme. It does work, in a sense, because for unblocking web content, you're just trying to find a country where a piece of, like, a YouTube video isn't blocked. It does do that, as advertised. The problem is, uh, it's also sharing your IP address with those people. As I said, though, Hola VPN, which is owned uh, by a web scraping company, is the most reputable of this category, purely because they do actually track down abuse, they only allow people who go through stringent verification to use their, their service. And in the extension, they block any site they don't know. So th this is among the better options. Still don't install it, but if you want to... But that, that, now we're going to look at some other website unlock, unblocker. Now this is Biu Biu VPN. Uh, this sounds like a, a, a Chinese name, which is rather interesting. Uh, given I, I would assume that this is not uh, good in the Great Firewall of China. And the website here uh, looks utterly sketchy. Now let's turn this on. Okay, we're now... Oh. Okay. Let's see. Let's try going to YouTube and try it again. Is this because of SSL pinning? The wire gold you see is how my MITM proxy setup works. So that's that's the VPN. Okay, we're not... Okay, here we go. So now it seems to work try actually searching something and we do in fact find a result so we are watching this with a us ip now let's look at their privacy policy and see how this extension actually works uh this looks like code injection this is not 
Maybe this is Edge. It's a safe and user-friendly tool. It's good to know that it's a user-friendly tool uh, that exists uh, for the benefit of the users. Now, this privacy policy does not say anything about extensions. Here they talk about free content tools, and this is ultimately goes to educatefarm.in, which says hello world. So we really can't find anything out through this company about it. So the only way we're going to learn how this tool works is by reverse engineering it. So let's do that. On any Chromium browser, whether it is Edge, uh, Chrome, Brave, or Derivatives, you simply go to user data, you go into the either Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, user data, default, extensions. And this is where you find the source code for any extension. Now, the background.js, actually, first of all, given how I, I think this is working, I'm going to turn this off because I actually I don't want this uh, sketchy app using my IP address as an exit node. Okay, so the worker fetches ipapi.com off screen.js. What's in here? New worker. Okay, so that spawns an IP address. Uh, okay, hard coded username and password is profoundly bad security practices. Most of the time what you would do if you were making this kind of an extension is you would call the main server with a request that the main server will then get your IP address and give you a UUID that identifies you and that works as your API key. That way they can to some degree monitor abuse. Uh, this is not a good approach. Uh, this is chat GPT code, I'm pretty sure. This is unfinished boilerplate code. I just installed an IDE to make this a bit easier because there's a couple of files in here and I'm still trying to find... I think there's a error here. Okay, so background bundle.js is the service worker. Pop up HTML. Okay, this is... and then that... Okay, so here's where the code for connecting to the VPN is going to be. Yay for bad React security dangerously set inner HTML. Uh, that, that can lead to a cross-site scripting or code injection vulnerability. We'll hope these people who use ChatGPT to generate their Chrome extension are smart enough to know when not to use it. Now, just for anyone curious, this is not obfuscated code, but because this is designed in React.js, which is kind of compiled because of the weirdness of JavaScript, this is quite different than what the source code that the programmer was typing or pasting from ChatGPT would have looked like. So here we've discovered some adware. Uh, under certain circumstances, it'll force you to visit their websites to unlock. So this could actually be similar to the one we uncovered uh, before. This could actually be another ad fraud scheme. This looks like a beg for Bitcoin. And this is a genuine feature, as far as I can tell, to actually stop WebRTC leaking. Now what you can do, and I'm just doing this on Chrome because I know how to, but you can do it on any Chromium browser, is you enable developer mode, and then what you are able to do, and you don't even need MITM proxy, is you just go to service worker, and then you go to network, and you can see any network activity that your Chrome extension is making. This is a very good way of catching if you've installed some sort of spyware extension on how the extension works. It's either doing it through there or it does it through uh, here. You can go to inspect and we can see it here. Now the way this one is working, okay, it's setting... It's setting the proxy setting through the extension. So we don't see the network activity because it's actually hitting the Windows proxy. Now we can still over we can still at least potentially see some of this activity through MITM proxy. If that doesn't work, then we have to fall back to Wireshark. Yeah, so we get a detection for MITM proxy. Now there's still a way of decrypting HTTPS traffic, it's just a bit less convenient, so we're going to do that now. And thanks to Google's CAPTCHA, we finally got an IP address. So now we can actually discover whether this is using residential IP addresses. Because their privacy policy certainly doesn't say anything interesting. This looks like a data center IP address. So that is good. So at least they haven't, uh, at least these people are not doing that. It's actually a different message than Google usually gives, though. It's usually, this network is blocked due to suspicious activity from your network. This is saying unaddressed abuse complaints. So this implies that Google have had worse problems with this IP address. So that makes me think, and it's very likely, and this would be what would scare me of this kind of an extension, 
that someone has reverse engineered whatever APIs they are using, uh, which doesn't shock me given how terrible their protections are and is actively using their IPs for very malicious things. That is the biggest reason to never use a free VPN. I mean, VPNs in general attract, obviously attract uh, abuse, but a free VPN is going to attract people who might want a free VPN because they think that paying for a VPN could be a way of unmasking criminal activity. That's not the only reason to want a free VPN. There's plenty of good reasons, but that is why you do not want to be the exit node for a free VPN. So on Windows, what you have to do is you create a file, call it SSL keylog file. Then we go to environment variables. We create an environment variable. Uh, we'll do both system and uh, the other one. And we'll choose this file. And we'll do this for both. We go to protocols, and then we go to TLS, transport layer security. And then we will select the SSO keylog file. If you see anything that looks plain text, uh, you'll know you have succeeded at decrypting TLS. Now, having the IP address, if we scroll up, uh, we might be able to find out how the connection was made. Now, another security problem with this setup is, as you might notice by the fact we are reading this in Wireshark, which you absolutely, even with SSL key logging, cannot do with a legitimate VPN, uh, it's not a VPN, because VPNs, uh, while, while they might overhype the benefits, a VPN encrypts your traffic. A proxy does not. That is one of the key differences. This is a proxy, not a VPN. Uh, and that is another uh, security downgrade. What, what that would mean is if your internet service provider was malicious, which is one of the reasons you might want a VPN, uh, they, they would be able to, well, they wouldn't be able to read HTTPS anyways, but they'd be able to read anything they could have read to begin with. And really, the only thing protecting us from an MITM on their end is HTTPS. They're not trying to serve us a weird certificate, so I don't think there is such a thing going on, but I, I would not use this service. It just seems really, really fishy. We're going to remove this and look at a few more. Now here is another one. This was one that was explicitly asked about in my Discord. So of course I'm going to test it as they had asked to. This is called Hawks VPN. So what does Hawks VPN do? You deserve 100% safety, privacy, and protection. Today's internet is a big threat even to experts. Okay, that much is true. So you're right to surf safely. So how does this work? That is the question. Money back guarantee. Okay. This is, in fact, I'm guessing not a free VPN. Okay, well, let's download it. Something that always scares me with something that says it blocks trackers is how is it doing that? Is it doing that in a safe way or is it doing that in a way that is uh, functionally spyware? Because blocking trackers over the network, there's a few ways of doing it uh, and all of them involve some level of access. Okay, and we don't need an account, which is good. Uh, I'm older than 18. At least they've got the common sense to put a capture on this so that an abuser can't completely repurpose it. Okay, so we'll go with the US as we did for all of other tests. Connection established. IP lookup. Okay, at least they're not trying to conceal what IP we're using and we can find out. Warning, your browser's web RTC is leaking. This site doesn't seem to be... Let's try a different site. And this is running on an OVH server, so it is not using customers as exit nodes, at least not for VPN customers. What they could be doing is using it uh, for commercial customers, but we can check. We can check. We should read the terms of service. So someone's calling it a scam, make extension again, not working, but those could just be technical problems. I find their privacy policy. Reddit uh, are, of course, uh, very concerned. Okay. Cookies. Advertising partners is a bit of an odd thing for a VPN to have. A transaction, we don't care about that. How we share your information. Okay, well, that's, on some level, that is necessary. Okay, so they also have some sort of uh, censorship. But, okay. Uh, no. So, they seem to be very, very uh, concerned about illegal activities. Can I use hawks for illegal activities and be sure not to get uh, caught? So, really, they are really uh, trying to get rid of this sketchy crowd. I, I don't have much to say about this. 
if they say vehemently that they don't uh, use your IP address as an exit node, and they have been around for any amount of time without being sued into oblivion, they're probably not lying. I mean, we can find some information about this uh, company. But the fact that they're so kind of chill about the whole logging thing, to me, is enough to never use a VPN provider that logs. Uh, because a VPN provider that is this open about the amount of logging they're doing is probably doing more logging than your internet service provider, unless you live in an authoritarian country, at which point you should probably be using something uh, much more secure. Now, Hotspot Shield is another one that uh, has gotten some mention. Uh, I actually I remember my great-grandfather getting an email from someone saying this was because he's of British origin but doesn't live there anymore, that it would be a great way to view British content uh, internationally. And I think that's kind of the demographic for this product. Uh, and what they are doing on the free version is injecting advertising. They do not have a good privacy policy. And the problem with injecting advertising, depending on how it is done, is, of course, that if you can inject ads or anything into the page, uh, you, you can do much worse, uh, you, and you can get hacked. It's just, in my opinion, a recipe for disaster, because there are far more security risks with this kind of advertising than there is with advertising that is intended to run in a browser, so no thank you. Now, one other uh, free VPN worth talking about is Opera Browser's free VPN. I think Brave might also have one. Now, it doesn't do any of the sketchiest things, but it's still not really trustworthy. For one, because it's not a VPN, it's a web proxy. And for two, because a lot of people have their doubts about the Opera company. I, I don't know, I, I don't like the thing of assuming a company is up to no good because of its country of domicile, given that most uh, Chinese uh, companies are just going to be, uh, much like American companies, are just doing what is incentivized. They're not, they have no incentive to do highly criminal things, and they're almost certainly not going to be government-run, uh, despite despite people's uh, worries. But I still, I, I don't trust any free VPN for the simple fact that the risk of interception is a big problem, as is the fact that it's not encrypted, and it's in the browser, which adds one other layer. Not that I think they have done they well for legal reasons, I can't say they've I have to say they haven't done this because they haven't. And I, I genuinely I think they would never ever do it. But the risk in having a VPN, a free VPN built into the browser, is the browser is able to have its own list of trusted certificate authorities. So now you can MITM HTTPS. Do I think they will ever do that? No. But can it be done? Yes, it is a very uh, real risk. So that would be another reason I would never use Opera Free VPN. Now here are the options. So enable default. Is that because these IPs are so uh, have such a bad reputation? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're constantly getting captured. And it seems are we, are we IPv6 only? I'm not even getting the capture. Okay. Now I am. That seems to be something Google has done uh, relatively recently for extremely abusive IP ranges. Is they just won't give them the capture because they are so confident that they are abusive. Okay, so we were able to put a search through, but let's try some other websites. Because this is actually a problem I forgot to mention with free VPNs. Because they are likely to attract automated tools, abuse, uh, reverse engineering of their APIs for scraping, these these IP addresses are going to be horrendously scold. Like, do not ever log into your account on a free VPN because your IP address is going to be associated with all kinds of spam. You Like, you could just instantly get banned for spam. Uh, now, let's see if we can actually watch a video. Wow, the performance on here is bad. It took forever for the ad player to even load. Uh, okay. No, that is terrible performance. Okay, we'll skip the ad. And the video does load. So we're not totally, like, this IP isn't totally banned from YouTube. Uh, can we turn the quality up at all? No. No, we can't. Uh, we can try, well, let's try 1080p. Okay, so we can, so we can do that. Now, one more uh, VPN I wanted to look at is called Star VPN. Star VPN is a proudly residential IP VPN. Now, this is different. Because while Hola VPN is owned or has a relationship with scraping company Bright Data, Stall VPN takes it a step further. Uh, they, they advertise everything on the same website, and in some ways I could respect that transparency. Because 
residential IPs that are sold responsibly are not always a problem. The problem is, while I can reasonably vouch that Bright Data, because I have made an account on there, I can be reasonably confident that Bright Data do actually do KYC. I have never used this company, so I would not be comfortable saying how they uh, handle that. So it would be a bit scarier than Hola for that reason. So let's download this and take a look. Okay, so we do have to create an account. VPN protocol, VPN obfuscation. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. A local DNS, Cloudflare, Google. Oh, what, what does Canada and UK and UAE mean? I guess some ISPs, and you can even download your log file. Okay, but let's just go to the uh, residential IP, the rotating residential. Where does that come from? Because they should, if they have any degree, because uh, there's two kinds of residential IP services. There are residential proxies that come from companies that use residential. Uh, basically, they rent out your IP as an alternative to advertising. It's a monetization scheme for free apps. There are also less legitimate residential IP services that are genuinely just running a botnet by covertly distributing malware to rent out your IPs. Okay, that's that's interesting. So these are then this is another, then these are if if that's true then these are not real residential IPs. Uh, what these people are actually doing then is they are renting cuz the way IPs work is if if you're an ISP, you have an ASN, and you have IPs assigned to you, and I guess I, there seems to be kind of a sketchy deal where they will these ISPs will let them use residential ASN IPs in a data center, so they're not actually running through uh, to a house. From what I've heard, these aren't quite as good at scraping, but that's not really the issue. Uh, how many are allowed? So you can buy five or ten VPN and socks. Tier 1 data centers. Okay. So these are the real residential IPs. Uh, this is a bit... <laughs> that's a bit of a red flag. M most legit residential IP services do not allow any use of residential IPs behind sign-ins for a number of reasons. Uh, please tell me it's not allowed over the residential IPs. Also, it says no registration here, but there is registration. We have to provide a review for the mobile VPN to get the desktop VPN. And if they are handing out residential IPs for free, they are just doing the same. They, they've just uh, recreated Hola, but without any of the safety that Hola have tried to add to make their product a bit safer. Okay, so here is where they... To, to me, well, while I could obviously, and someone who is technical, can figure out <laughs> where how this is working, to me, this is absolutely dreadful disclosure. At least if you went through Hola you found, okay, uh, the, they are selling my data to their sister company. Here, we use a small fraction of idle network resources for research and development purposes. That is not what, if they are doing what we think they're doing, uh, that, that is not what they are saying they're doing. You, you cannot, like, just for legal purposes, because they don't outright say it, but you absolutely legally cannot say that you are using something for research and development purposes and then proceed to use it for commercial purposes that is i just did a bit more digging on the company out of curiosity and it looks like basically it's not cyber criminals buying their uh, residential ips first of all just to make people feel a bit safer so what seems to be happening and this is still i would be kind of it's not ethical in my opinion but we'll get on to uh, what happening. So here we've got the ads power residential proxy setup. This whole rabbit hole started when I looked at their trust pilot and noticed that the reviews were not typical of scrapers. This was people genuinely using this as a desktop residential VPN and I couldn't figure out why they would want such a thing. But the answer appears to be to, de to get ad accounts. Now everyone here has complained uh, and especially when uh, blocking, uh, ad blocking software is ever brought up. Uh, people complain about the amount of scam ads on YouTube. So why is it so hard for Google to get rid of the nuisance advertisers? 
Well, I don't want to single out this company, and I legally cannot do that, but what I will say is it's because of tools, such as this browser, which may also have legitimate uses, that are designed to allow people to maintain multiple unrelated ad accounts, which they are not supposed to be doing under most companies' terms of service. The legality of this is far more complicated because you're dealing with technically monopolies, but... Let's just say that Google's trust and safety team do not like things like this for obvious reasons. What you're doing here, if you go through it, is you can configure your user agent, and the idea is, whether it works or not, I can't say, uh, is that you would create accounts that look different, and therefore, if one of your ad accounts uh, got banned for any reason, I mean, these people will say it's because you're getting false banned because evidently Google, you know, G Google are known not to want money from advertisers, but I, I'm sure that people uh, do, doing this are generally getting banned uh, because they're doing something against the policies. So how do you avoid it? Well, there are two ways. You could either try and follow the platform's terms of service, uh, or you could invest in a tool that claims it will help you get around that. Now, I am skeptical of this, purely because, in my experience, from black hat people, like, Black Hat SEO, not Black Hat Hacking, to be clear, people I have known, is their understanding of platforms' detection methods are mostly based on conspiracy theories and guesswork, and a lot of this functionality sort of caters to that. Yeah, I can't speak for how Google catch abusers, but using a sketchy proxy network is probably going to attract more attention than using, let's say, NordVPN, where people use it for any variety of reasons, not just trying to get around ad account controls. That's just my opinion. So finally, I thought I would give honorable mentions and kind of like, assuming you have a really important need, you're not able to pay money and you've got some sort of a censorship uh, concern or you just need, uh, it doesn't have to be fast. Uh, the best option, of course, is the famous and well-known Tor browser. Tor browser, which is also known at, as the way that you access the dark web, is free, open source, and it is designed in such a way, with one exception I'll get into, that a single one of these volunteer-run nodes cannot unmask you. So even if uh, a malicious person or the NSA is controlling a node, that does not unmask you. Now, there is still a risk on Tor, and that is... If for whatever reason you are accessing a HTTP site, now this doesn't apply to onions. Onions have their own system. If you're accessing a HTTP site on the clearnet, there is a very substantial risk of an MITM. There was a study run years ago that found that a lot of HTTP sites uh, with Bitcoin addresses were having their Bitcoin addresses uh, removed. Uh, you can have JavaScript injection, which is why Tor by default is very restrictive of JavaScript. So just don't use HTTP without the S over Tor, and you are mostly fine. And ideally, because lots of things, not just illegal things, lots of legitimate things, like the New York Times and Facebook have dark web or onions. And in fact, if you go to a site that has an onion, you for it to load, because that is the thing about Tor, is because your IP address goes through four different routes, hence why this is genuinely very anonymous, and you actually get a prompt telling you to go to the Onion. Because that gives you better privacy on sites that have Onion. The Onion, uh, dark web, or hidden services, or whatever you want to call it, is a fundamentally different internet where IP addressing and identity do not meaningfully exist. Uh, there's no useful information sent to an Onion site when you connect to it, unless you give them information, and you cannot other than, of course, we know where the New York Times is hosted, I identify an Onion domain because it's based on cryptography. So that is kind of the ultimate privacy solution. So if you need a, a service that doesn't cost money, uh, that, that's really the only uh, thing I would recommend. There is also uh, a few volunteer-run free VPNs. The problem I have with that is, unless there is insanely strict vetting on who is running those services, because unlike Tor, there are not multiple layers involved... To, to me, that seems like a massive risk, given there is no incentive uh, to run such a thing. There could, some of them will be altruistic, uh, some of them will be uh, planning various malicious activities, so I personally wouldn't trust it. 
that is going to be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments uh, what you think, if you agree or disagree about free VPNs, if you agree or disagree about, like, non-commercial VPNs as well. Uh, in, in terms of which VPNs are good, my general opinion, given I'm not presently sponsored by any of them and would consider, is pretty much all of the commercial VPNs are about the same. Mulvad VPN is in many ways a step up. They are they, they have spent more of their effort on privacy, but no VPN provider will go to jail for you. So in the event there is a wiretap on you and they cannot win in court, they will probably do it. So ultimately, VPNs do provide an additional layer of anonymy. Uh, they, they protect you from some types of MITM attacks, but they're not a perfect defense. And I would also say that for a large portion of people, they're probably not something you need. So that's all for now. Bye.